Oh yeah, blue Tibetan. <laughs> Hashish lines, huh? Yeah, first time I was in Kathmandu just at this time. Yeah. Uh, and he taps out invisible music, jazz, with his eight fingers on the table. As uh, Inguela walks in, and uh, with her boyfriend Greg. Oh, boom, boom. He 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 knows him from the Bombay Freak House, but what? They have an intense, like, split-up scene right on the spot in front of Eddie. Off Greg goes, leaving Anguilla freaked out. No money. No boyfriend to protect her anymore. Uh, well, Eddie's sympathetic to her plight, so he invites Anguilla to come and stay with him in the communal dorm bed spaces at the dormitory. This is way up market. We're talking two rupees a night. 20 cents? Not one of those one rupee places, huh? I mean, this place actually has a cold shower. And, uh, yeah, so uh, he picks up the tab for Anguilla and calm her down. Luscious Anguilla. <laughs> You know, sleeps on the mattress next to his, and uh, the other freaks in the dormitory whisper their condemnation. You know, uh, that's when he's teenagers, like half his age. You know, hard to believe it unless you see it with your own eyes. <laughs> Eddie muses sadly. How disappointing to hear such comments coming from these, what, the supposedly freedom-loving hippies? They're not as hip as they think they are. They may smoke ganja, but they're as conventional as their alcoholic-drenched parents. Eddie turns lazily on uh, his mattress to face Inguela, mm -hmm. his teenage companion, to explain gently to her, why he is not into sex. Hmm. Well, uh, in this, you know, benevolent atmosphere, uh, Anguilla gets their head together in a couple of days. Uh, she hooks up with some friends out in Swinebunath in a communal house. She invites Eddie to join her, you know, enter their house. And he politely uh, demurs because uh, he likes freaks and there's more freaks in town. So, um, yeah, uh, he'll stay in town. He... Hasn't Eddie come a long way since the Bombay Freak House? When he was anxious and reluctant to stay with those hippies on Juhu Beach. Well, now he homes in on and wholeheartedly embraces the hippie environment in India and Nepal, where he is honored. And feels he belonged. Well, Mary, David, the other freaks in Kathmandu, they're, they're headed back down to Goa. Uh, <laughs> they want to avoid the summer monsoon in the Himalayas. Uh, starts in June, lasts through the Himalayan summer. Uh, but Eddie, he's content to linger in the smoking cafe si society at the Blue Tibetan. He explains to them, like, summer's when the the students in Europe get out, so they'll be pouring into here. I want to hang out with them. Well, uh, phew, big news on our little world hippie scene. Uh, Ram Dass uh, comes on to the scene in Kathmandu. Great excitement. Uh, he's wearing, uh, and Bhagavan Das. uh his guide and more. <laughs> Ramdas have been real coy about his sexuality, and but others are filling in the pieces there. Yeah, Eddie. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I mean, Bhagwan does it way back in Athens before you can ever remember anything about that. Bhagwan does turned him on to going to India instead of going to Egypt. Is there anybody Bhagwan does hasn't turned on? to their guru or 
destination. Uh, amazing character. Mm -hmm. Well, Bhagavan does. He offers Eddie, hey, you want some money or LSD? I mean, I'm with Ram Dass, okay? And uh, if that would help you out. Eddie uh, says no thanks, you know. Uh, no, he takes pride in being absolutely independent from everybody. He savors his non-attachment, drugs, sex, uh, free handouts, celebrities. Uh, he's absolutely, absolutely self-sufficient on his $100 a month self-pension. <laughs> Ram does. Hmm. May he rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, holding court in the five-star luxury salty hotel. Giving up free LSD to hippies. So, you know. Eddie, he declines an invitation to join Bhagwan Das and hang out with Ram Das. He's just not interested. Uh, He'd rather return to his 20 cent a day room in the dormitory, turn on ragas on the radio, and <laughs> dance. It's kind of a pattern. I mean, a few years later, when um, <laughs> uh, Rajneesh, uh, Osho, uh, they had this outrageous scene at the Lakshmi Villas in, in Pune. Eddie was there, uh, but <laughs> he's declined to even meet. Oh, sure. Same disinterested manner. Yeah. Uh, well, Simon in the Blue Tibetan. Oh, boy. London newspaper. The, the, the London Sunday Times printed a four-page splash across uh, their Sunday paper. White tribes caravanning to India and Nepal. And there's a photograph of Eddie captioned, Eight Finger Eddie, the uncle of the hippies. Well, oh. in a world of his own, Eddie Scat sings jazz, you know, drumming on the tabletop with his eight nimble fingers. And I'll show you a picture of him soon. You've hung out this long and you can't afford a book. I know that, huh? Your food stamps will only go so far. <laughs> Uh, another table, there's a disillusioned Peace Corps uh, dropout. Hmm. She actually quit the Peace Corps overseas. <laughs> and what? She laughs at everything Eddie says. Not even, it's not a joke. Anything he talks about. And, well, Eddie says, look, Alice quickly became one of my, those freaks who went everywhere I went. I mean, back in Gulf, Eddie would go get a haircut. You know, he'd have like 17 freaks following him to the barber shop. Started up in Kathmandu right about now. Uh, yeah. She even moved into the dormitory to be near him. Intense hero worship. Becoming rampant around Eddie as his fame for... Nothing special. Uh, 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 grows uh, spectacularly uh, throughout uh, Asia. You know, I'm talking midsummer, 1967, summer monsoon in Goa, winding down. Makes Eddie think about those tropical beaches, you know. Hmm. Yeah, the monsoon, different monsoons. <laughs> Up in the Himalayas, it's in the summer, and in India, <laughs> don't bother. With any of that, yeah, it's way too much information for you. Only got so many synapses left, they're gonna only fire for so many more times. Do you realize that my heart has beat more than three billion times, and I have got through the night somehow more than 27,000 times? You don't even appreciate this, this huge a miracle you're, you're actually in called a human body, anyway. Um. So he invites uh, Inguela, uh, uh, his hangout partner, uh, well, to go with him to Goa. And she accepts warm-heartedly, yes, I'd love to come with you. So together they take the bus 
to the Indian border at Roxall, and from the frontier, they take the train to Bernard, to the houseboat scene in Bernard. Mm.